hey, remember when my mic broke and they sent me a replacement? Well, the replacement broke too, in exactly the same way. Just a little piece of the USB broke off inside the plug. The first time I think I dropped it, I think that was the problem. I didn't even drop this one. It was just sitting on my desk and it decided, nah, it, I'm gonna, it's gonna break now. We're, we're just gonna break. You moved the cord too hard or something. That's gonna break it. I, I'm almost ready to give up on this microphone, but I have a warranty and I'm gonna run that warranty for every penny it's worth. Because if you're gonna sell me a shit microphone, I'm gonna run you out of business. Anyways, werewolf movies. Y'all like werewolf movies? I watched Wolfman, uh, the original. Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. And also, um, some other people. Uh, Dana, no, not Dana Andrews. Who is the Invisible Man? Fuck me. Claude Rains. Claude Rains is in it. And uh, Bella Lugosi is in it. Um, as a character whose name is spelled exactly like Bella Lugosi's name, but is called Bela, which makes me wonder if his name is actually Bela Lugosi and everyone's pronouncing it wrong. This was a, a pretty late Universal Monster. I mean, not, not super late, but like, this was, this was the early 40s, so well after... Frankenstein and Dracula were huge hits, but, you know, before, like, their 50s lineup, which is a little questionable. Um, I mean, there's some good stuff in the 50s. This is when Creature from the Black Lagoon came out, but... Yeah, like, the 30s was their heyday, and then this was, like, sort of the middle of universal monster movies. Is that camera, like, way too high? I feel like it's cutting off a lot of the table. Oh, well, part of the problem is I moved the table closer, so it would be more even. So yeah, it, it had a lot of the uh, recurring uh, Universal Monster actors. You know, the Invisible Man's in it, Dracula's in it, and of course Lon Chaney is in it. And Lon Chaney has played many, many characters over the years. Um, but I think the Wolfman is the one he's probably best known for, although this thing keeps falling over because there's like five DVDs in here, and they're all sort of loose. So it's kind of hard to just set it down. I bet I could, uh... Don't try this at home, kids. Uh, yeah, Lon Chaney, probably best known for playing the Wolfman. Um, or Lon Chaney Jr., I should say. Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. So, uh, the Wolfman is the story of Larry Talbot, who, who returns to his father's castle, I guess. I think that's my understanding of this. If your father lived in a castle, why would you leave? Like, it's this giant fucking castle, and he's all set up to be, like, the lord of this town. Why would you leave that city? Ever? But he comes back after... Fuck knows what. Maybe he went to, like, travel the world or something. It wasn't, like, a long-term thing, but... For whatever reason, he's left, and now he is back. And, uh... He, he, he meets this girl, and they go get their fortunes told by these, hmm, I think gypsies is not a word you're supposed to use, but I don't know how else to describe these people. <laughs> you know, the traveling fortune tellers. It, it, it's gypsies. I get it, I get it. Romanians are called gypsies, and it's sort of derogatory about them, but also there's, like, a very specific lifestyle attached to the word gypsy. If I say Romanians, people just think it's some random people from Romania. I mean, specifically, gypsies. 
So they, they, they go get their fortune told by the gypsies, and it turns out one of them is a werewolf. And later on, Larry finds a wolf attacking a man, and he, he beats him to death with his silver club that he just bought uh, from, from the girl he's interested in. He be beats him to death with a silver club and uh, with, like, the silver end of a walking stick. But he gets bit in the process, and then he becomes the wolf man. They don't really mention the full moon in this movie. That's That tends to be, like, a big part of the werewolf story, is that the, the full moon turns him into a werewolf, but in this movie they're more about, like, wolf's bane. When the wolf's bane grows, the, the werewolf will turn into a wolf. Yeah, you know, and then he's a werewolf, and they hunt him down because he's a werewolf. You know, pretty typical werewolf stuff. I mean, I guess at the time this was one of the earliest werewolf films. Um, but, you know, it's about what you expect from a werewolf story. It, it, it's like the original werewolf story, ignoring uh, Werewolf of London, which is actually a very boring movie and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, Wolfman I really enjoy. It's definitely on the upper end of uh, like the classic universal monster movies for me. Um, I, I like it a lot better than, like, honestly, even, probably the first Dracula. I like it better than the first Dracula, and, uh, better than, like, The Mummy, or, like, uh, The Fishman, Gillman, Creature from the Black Lagoon. His name is Gillman. The monster's name is Gillman. Um, I, I was kinda, like, I, I watched it, and I'm like... I'm really not sure what to talk about with this movie. It is pretty simple. It's pretty short. It's pretty simple. It's it's just what you expect. It is the Wolfman. You know, it's it's kind of a cultural staple in that way. There's not a whole lot to it, or not a whole lot to say. But uh I, I definitely enjoy it. It's one of my favorite Universal movies. Yeah, really not that much to say about The Wolfman. It's fun. It's, a you know, one of the classic Universal monster movies. I like it. Watch it. After that, we watched Another Wolf Cop, the, uh, the sequel to Wolf Cop, which we talked about last time. And, uh, I, I said last time I haven't really heard anything about this sequel. Like, no one has talked about this. Even though I have heard plenty of people talk about the original. And having watched the sequel... It's kind of hard to say. Like, I, I kind of, like... I get why not as many people have talked about it. But at the same time, it's pretty good. Like, if you liked the first movie, you'll probably like this one. It, it does it's not as good as the first film, and I, I kind of have trouble putting into words why. It feels less consequential, first off, and less character-motivated. Like, it, it felt like Lou really had something, like, personal going on in, in the first Wolf Cop. Like, he's this town fuck-up, and no one likes him. But now he's here to, like, prove he isn't this fuck-up everyone thinks he is. And in this one, like, Lou is barely a part of the story. It's, it's mostly just the wolf cop. Yeah, and, and, and story-wise, like, there's supposed to be some, like, escalation with the sequel. It's supposed to be crazier, more intense, and this feels... A little flatter than the first film, like not 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 as much is going on. Um, they do explore the changeling storyline a little more, but hardly in an interesting way. It's like, okay, yeah, the stakes are 
exactly what they were in the first film. Great. Uh, so, so in the sequel, Lou has kind of gone off as like this uh, lone wolf, if you will. Ha ha. They, they call him that in the movie. He, he's not really working with the police department, which is now run by uh, the lady from the first movie, whose name I can't remember. Um, she's running the police department, and she's got these two rookies on. Um, and she, she's training them, and they're like, well, what about the wolf cop? And she's like, there's no such thing as the wolf cop. It's made up, and... Uh, meanwhile, she's, like, she, she's hiding Lou. He's hiding off in this, like, uh, animal shelter. He has, like, a secret little base in the animal shelter to be wolf cop in, so no one knows that the wolf cop is real. They can play it like, ah, oh, the wolf cop, he's just some fantasy people have made up. So they stop this delivery to the, like, Changeling headquarters, and it turns out it's Willy from the first movie. Except in the first movie, he was a Changeling, and now he's a human, so I guess the Changelings, like, kidnapped him and took his place, but that really didn't seem to be the case for any of the other Changelings. Just seemed like they wanted to bring Willy back. So, Willy's back, and, uh... There's this uh, new hockey rink slash uh, brewery in in the town um, that's all, all funded by this one guy who, of course, is a changeling. They don't even try to hide that he's the villain. They reveal he's the villain in the first, like, five minutes of the movie. So, yeah, he's the villain, and he's, he's brewing this beer that it turns out has, like, alien eggs in it, and when they play just the right frequency, the aliens hatch inside of people. And, and Willy is, like, one of the earliest test subjects because he's got, like, this alien, like, growing out of him through most of the movie. Um, and it looks a lot like the worm from Thanks Killing 3. Points off for reminding me of Thanks Killing 3. It's also just a lot less... It's, it's a lot more immature than the first Wolf Cop. Like, the first Wolf Cop is fun and silly and over the top. This one's got a lot of dick jokes. And it's like... You didn't have that many dick jokes in the first movie. They all, like, worked in the first movie. They don't all work in this movie. Overall, I did still enjoy this movie. I still think it's worth watching if you enjoyed the first Wolf Cop. But it's it's definitely a bit of a step down from the first movie. Like the the first movie is like fun, fast paced action, doesn't stop, and this is kind of eh, it's got a lot of fun action scenes. Definitely, definitely still has like the energy of the first movie. But um, yeah, it's it's also got its problems. A lot more problems, I would say, than the first film. I don't know. It's fun, but it's not as fun as Wolf Cop. So a lot of uh, fun stuff in this movie. Um, Kevin Smith makes a cameo as the mayor of the town. Like, he shows up and I'm like, is that fucking Kevin Smith? And I, I get on IMDb and he's not credited. It's an uncredited cameo, but it was, in fact, Kevin Smith. Which, which says to me Kevin Smith is a fan of the first Wolf Cop. So, good on him. Good, good taste for him. He even makes some joke about, like, a uh, porn parody he was working on called The Cunt for Red October. And I'm like, is this just a leftover joke from Clerks or Zack and Mary make a porno? I, I have to go back and watch those. They might have used a, The Cunt for Red October. Which would, you know, put this in continuity with the, uh... Jane Silent Bob universe, so... That'd be fun. There's also a cameo from, uh... Hold on, I wrote his name down. It's a cameo from... Gowen? Or Guan? I think Guan. It's this Canadian pop artist... From the 80s. 
Um, this is, like I said last time, Wolf Cop was, like, extremely Canadian. They have upped the Canadian factor for this movie. I mean, uh, the, the plot revolves around a brewery and a hockey game. They sing O Canada in the movie. And then they have a cameo from this Canadian pop star who, like, no one has heard of. Maybe Canadians have heard of him, but... I certainly have not as an American. As, as, as an American who was not alive in the 80s, but who incidentally listens to a lot of 80s music and just never come across this person before. I, I would count uh, the first Wolf Cup as a very metal movie. Like, I, I've been thinking about doing like a, a follow-up, like the top 10 next most metal movies to get all the ones I either forgot or left off my original list. Um, and I, I think Wolf Cop would be on it. But this one's even more metal than the first Wolf Cop. Like, there's a lot more metal music. There's a scene where they're even, like, in a bar while a metal band is playing. So, this is probably the more metal of the two. Yeah, it's fun. It's a perfectly acceptable follow-up to Wolf Cop. They do promise at the end that Wolf Cop will return. I don't know if there's going to be a third Wolf Cop or not at this point, because this was not that long ago. This was 2017? 2017. So, yeah, like four years. So, you know, there could be another Wolf Cop coming down the pipeline. Uh, we'll see if it's any good. I'm cautiously optimistic, I guess, because, like... They could. They, a sequel to Wolf Cop could go downhill very quickly. But so far, they've kept it above board. Like, I, I don't think this is a shitty, like, cop-out sequel. Which I was kind of worried it would be. Another Wolf Cop. If you like the first Wolf Cop, I say check it out. And then finally, we had... Uh, the ever-classic The Howling from Joe Dante. I can't believe this is the first Joe Dante movie I've shown. It's actually one of my, probably like on the lower end of my, of Joe Dante movies. At least of his good movies. Lower end of Joe Dante's good movies. Um, I'm a big fan of Joe Dante. He's a very consistent director, like... His, his good movies never get above a certain level, and his bad movies never get below a certain level. Like, everything he's made kind of falls in, like, the 5 out of 10 to 7 out of 10 range. He does have, I think, two great movies. Uh, Gremlins 2, The New Batch, the greatest movie ever made, and The Second Civil War seriously underrated film. More people should talk about the Second Civil War. It's one of it's it's Joe Dante's best work, except Gremlins 2, which is the greatest film ever and will never be topped. Uh, the Howling is a werewolf movie from Joe Dante. It's not even like because most of his films are horror comedy. You know, they're very tongue in cheek. They're very silly. Um, this one, it, it's a little tongue-in-cheek, but it is probably his most serious movie. It's, there's, there's not a lot of, it, it doesn't stray that far from, you know, just being a, a very straightforward werewolf movie, um, with some excessive violence, which I am always down for. This is the story of this, like, investigative news reporter who is, like, I think, like, being stalked by a werewolf, and then, you know, that werewolf gets shot, and so she, she goes, like, what's going on with this guy? And she tries to, like, investigate, backtrack. She finds this, like, village out in the forest, this sort of independent village that lives out on their own, and it turns out all of them are werewolves. Um, 
that's kind of a spoiler, but also, like, of course they're all werewolves. That's... There wouldn't be a movie if they weren't all werewolves. Um, yeah, wild movie. Uh, very fun. Joe Dante movies always are. They're always very fun. Um, lots of little smiley faces around the uh, movie. Came with a smiley face sticker. So, uh, next time people ask me if my button is a reference to The Watchmen, I'm going to tell them it's a reference to The Howling. It's not. It's not a reference to anything. It's just a smiley face button, but... Of, of course, because it is a Joe Dante film, there's lots of cheeky little jokes in there. I realized, uh, I noticed early on in the film there's a doctor named Dr. Wagner, uh, a reference to George Wagner, who directed, uh, you know, our first film tonight, The Wolfman. <laughs> so, you know, cheeky little reference to him. I, I, I noticed that one because uh, I, I had just, like, put his name in the credits of the last video. Um, apparently, a lot of the characters in this movie are named after people who've directed werewolf movies. So, that's that's the one I noticed. I just, I noticed that one, I, I looked into it, and uh, apparently a bunch of them are named after werewolf directors. I can't name that many werewolf movies, come to think of it. Um... Even fewer that came out before The Howling, because, I mean, of course you got the, the two Wolf Cop movies, which I, I have talked about, and uh, the same year as this was uh, John Landis's uh, American Werewolf in London. Um, so he wouldn't have been able to reference that because it came out after this film was in production. There's some other little stuff in there. There's this uh, a news reporter named Lou Landers, and later on there is a Lou Landers in the first Gremlins movie, uh, another, uh, another news anchor named Lou Landers in Gremlins. Um, and of course, Dick Miller shows up as Walter Paisley, a character he's played in, like, a dozen movies. He's died at least twice. At least twice that I know of. Because he originated in the movie A Bucket of Blood from 1960. And in that movie, he dies. <laughs> but then he shows up again in Hollywood Boulevard, which is another Joe Dante joint. Uh, this shopping mall where he dies... Um, mm, two or three others. He was on, like, he was on a TV show as Walter Paisley. I think he's Walter Paisley in Night of the Creeps. Um, it's, it's a character he plays a lot. In this one, he runs an occult bookstore. It's one of the many lives of Walter Paisley, who has been an artist, a janitor, uh, a, a, a occult book salesman, a, a, um, a Hollywood agent, you know, he does all this shit, um, <laughs> just for some reason, whenever, whenever these Corman guys get Dick Miller in their movie, they're like, you're playing Walter Paisley, and Dick Miller's just like, okay, I'm Walter Paisley again, even though it's a completely different character, <sighs> gotta love Dick Miller, great actor. Um, gotta love Joe Dante, great director. He kind of, I, I give Joe Dante a lot of credit. He was one of, like, he, he's part of that, like, Corman gang that really pioneered the modern horror comedy. Cor Corman had some sort of comedic movies early on, like A Bucket of Blood and uh, A Little Shop of Horrors. But then, you know, like, Joe Dante and Paul Bartel and uh, Alan Arkush come in and they're making all these, like, crazy, goofy movies. And I think it really set the tone for what horror comedy was supposed to be like. Actually, Corman has a cameo in this movie. He's, like, standing outside of a, a payphone in a scene. Speaking of movies this could cross over with, 
Kevin McCarthy shows up as a news station operator, and he later plays a news station operator in one of my favorite movies, UHF. So this could be in the same universe as UHF. Kinda, maybe. John Carradine's in it. This is our second John Carradine film. Saw him uh, initially in Vampire Hookers. And he was in the re-edited version of Lucifer's Women, but that's not the one I showed in Movie Night. The version I showed did not have John Carradine in it. So, two Carradines so far. Um, I guess we haven't had any of the other Carradines, have we? I don't think we have. It's a very late John Carradine, you know, early 80s. He, he was quite old in the early 80s. Uh, the lead actor of this film, Christopher Stone. I thought he looked kind of familiar. I looked him up. He hasn't really been in anything else I've seen. But as I was looking him up, I found he died the day I was born. October 20th. 1995, the day I was born. Crazy, crazy shit. Yeah, uh, The Howling, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, not my favorite Joe Dante movie, but still a very enjoyable one. Still one I would recommend watching. I, I guess we should talk about the sequels. The Howling is one of those weird franchises that, like, no one cares about. But there's so many fucking sequels. I think I've only seen the first three. I have the second one right here. The Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf. Horrible movie. Very funny movie. Horrible movie. So even, like, the second movie, it's like, okay, this franchise sucks. And then it just keeps going. And it's not like there's, like... An iconic character carrying this franchise. You know, it's not Hellraiser. It's not Friday the 13th. It's not Nightmare on Elm Street. The main thing of the howling is just werewolves. And it's different werewolves every time. It's not even consistent one movie to the next. It's it's a, a disconnected anthology series. There are no recurring characters. So, any werewolf movie could be a Howling sequel. You know? Fuck it. Make Wolf Cup the Howling 17. You know, who cares? It just, just any werewolf movie can be a Howling sequel. Which, like, is kind of some shit. It makes the Howling feel very disconnected from all of its sequels, because this is a good movie with effort put into it, and they're all cheap cash grabs. Apparently, because uh, Christopher Lee is in the second one, apparently when Christopher Lee met Joe Dante on the set of uh, Gremlins 2, he apologized for appearing in The Howling 2. He's like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for being in that terrible sequel to your movie. Let me make up for it by being in an excellent sequel to one of your movies. <sighs> Can you tell I like Gremlins 2? Has, has, have I made that clear enough yet? I love Gremlins 2. Uh, last week I asked what your favorite werewolf movie was. No one answered. So... <laughs> uh, I guess my favorite werewolf movie is Wolfman. Maybe Wolf Cop. I... It would honestly be pretty close between those. I do love Wolf Cop. Although, if you're looking for a bit of a lesser-known werewolf movie, a little more obscure werewolf movie, I am a big fan of In the Company of Wolves, which, in my opinion, has the best werewolf transformation sequence. Like, like fuck American Werewolf in London. The real shit. In the Company of Wolves. Best, best werewolf transformation. Plus, Terrence Stamp plays the devil. How can you go wrong with that? I love Terrence Stamp. I don't know. We should watch In the Company of Wolves. That'd be a good recommendation. But not tonight. Tonight we're continuing down the path of Universal Monster movies. So, I, uh, 
another obvious question. What's your favorite Universal Monster movie? There's not that many to pick from. I mean, there's actually a lot more than people realize. There's like... 70 or 80 Universal Monster movies from that era, but half of them are just like stuff no one cares about, like the thing that couldn't die. Uh, we're not gonna watch any of those. We're gonna watch like the classics, like the shit everyone remembers. We're gonna watch Frankenstein. And then we're gonna switch up the order from usual. Uh, usually I put the movie I haven't seen second, but just for the sake of continuity, I guess, uh, we're gonna show Bride of Frankenstein second, and then we're gonna end it off with Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. So, the ultimate crossover. And also, I think that's the only, like, real Wolfman sequel is Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. He shows up in a couple of the other, like, hey, let's put all of the Universal Monsters together in a movie. You know, he's in House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula, but Frankenstein meets the Wolfman is the only one where he gets any billing at all. So, uh, next time, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Perfect. Wonderful. Um, let me know what your favorite Universal Monster is. Uh, and until next time, I'm Matt. Have a nice day.